Pleased to welcome Wes Anderson back to this table, and also to thank him for sitting in when Bob Evans was here in this chair. Oh, that was my pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. It's good to be here. Didn't I see the other day where Bob Evans is coming to Broadway or somewhere? He's going to do something. I think he's going to do the, performance he's or something. Do the Robert Evans story on Broadway. <laughs> he's a good storyteller. He can't get enough of the Robert Evans story, can he? <laughs> no. and, and it's done well for him. Yeah. Uh, tell me about this movie. Uh, well, this is a life aquatic. The life aquatic. It's uh, Bill Murray plays a um, sort of Jacques Cousteau-esque um, oceanographer. Um, uh, I mean, his his occupation is like Cousteau. His character is more like Bill Murray, um, and it's about him and his gang on a on a voyage to find a sort of mythical creature, kind of a Moby Dick kind of story. And the idea came from. Idea came from I had written um, a little short story. Actually, it was about a paragraph about 15 years ago, um, and it was just sort of something I had sitting around for years. And somewhere along the way, I worked with I worked with Bill on Rushmore, right. the second movie I did. And when I was doing that, I thought the combination of that character with Bill Murray would be good. And I brought it up to him then, and we've been sort of planning it since. I then. want to talk about him in a few minutes, but okay. um, you know, this this is about Steve's life. You know, was it a failure in the end? Yeah, yeah, it's a, well, you know, I guess um, for me, I always, I think I find failure more interesting or appealing than success or something, and I feel like every movie I do is, ends up being about failure, and this one more so than anything. Um, this is, I mean, it's, you know, this, his, this character is really at a low point. Um, and, what is um, he doing in his life at the beginning of the film? Uh, at the beginning of the film, he's he's debuting uh, a documentary that he's made that's you know a disaster. Yeah. He's 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 showing a disaster to the world. When you look, you you brought together all these terrific talents, but is part of the way you do it? You and I talked about the fact that you wanted to make a movie in Rome, because right. I remember trying to get in touch with Bill because he was over there and said so he's in Rome. You know, right. and first of all, you you have to call him. Right, there's and nobody else. There's nobody else. There's yeah. no PR person. There is no assistant. You've got to just call him. There's no agent. There's, there's no agent. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So you called him up to get him on this film? Yes. Repeatedly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, the first time you, you, he wouldn't return your call? Uh, well, you know, he, he has his, his, his thought process in terms of taking a role is always uh, complex, and he likes to weigh it out and think about things for a while. And um, it's, it's why, hard to pin him down for that. But why is he so appealing? I, you know, I, uh, for me, he's just one of my favorite. I, I actually responded more to the Bill Murray that I saw in movies like Mad Dog and Glory and Ed Wood than the Bill Murray from Caddyshack and Stripes, although mm -hmm. I love him in those too. But it, whatever it is, when you walk down the street with Bill in, in anywhere, he, people love him in a way that I've never seen with any other, you know. You know, I've seen a lot of movie stars walking around crowded streets, and nobody has a response that Bill that because Bill Murray has. Because he's accessible. Because yeah, I, it, people definitely feel like they know him, and I think that has to do with him being on TV every week for you know when he was doing Saturday Night Live. But also just there's something warm and something they connect to, and he's yeah. and he's obviously unbelievably funny. But there is something. Uh, sad or tragic about him, I think that people can relate to, and you can just see it in his eyes. And, um, and who is Ned Plimpton in this film? That's Owen Wilson, um, and uh, he's a friend of mine from Texas. And we wrote uh, the other three movies I've done. Uh, we wrote together. Um, this is the first movie I've, I've written without him. Wrote with uh, Noah Baumbach, a, a different friend of mine. Um, but Owen plays one of the main. Yeah, how roles. do you write a movie together? In the case of this movie, and, and it's similar to the way Owen and I worked, worked together, but um, with, with Noah and I on this movie, what we did was we met every day in an Italian restaurant um, uh, on 6th Avenue and before lunch and stayed there until after dinner, and we talked <laughs> through it. And that's, that's we literally wrote the whole, the whole movie in an Italian restaurant. Yeah. What and, was the uh, Italian restaurant? Barpiti, you know it? <laughs> yes, yes, I do. I do. <laughs> so now, for all you aspiring filmmakers, you know, that's the place. There, there is magic in those tables. <laughs> so, but but you would you write a you sit down and you talk about character development, you talk about storyline, and you yeah, you, but is there somebody sitting there with a laptop saying da da da? -da? I, I keep a little notebook and I write it down and we you know we figure out all the dialogue and the thing is that we would 
we get we we get very animated there, and we kind of start acting out the scenes. And everybody who works there knows the entire story of the movie. I mean, all the waiters and everybody they 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 watched it progress bit <laughs> yes. by bit. You know, the day we decided to have a pirate attack, everybody there was uh, participating in that. Thought that was that. great. Yeah. yeah, and some of the names of characters come literally off the menu, and you know we're informed by everything around us. There. All right, here Kate Blanchett's character is Jane Winslet Richardson. Right. Reporter, yeah, uh, National Geographic type reporter. Right. Um, in some ways, uh, her look is inspired by Jane Goodall, right. um, and um, and um, and you know, and, she, and she's a fantastic actress, somebody who I'd been really dying oh, to yeah, work with. Um, Roll tape. Here, here is a scene from uh, with Steve Zizou and Bill Murray, interviewed by Jane Winslet Richardson, Kate Blanchett. So what happened, in your opinion? What are you talking about? Well, don't you think the public perception of your work has significantly altered in the last five years? That's your first question? I thought this was supposed to be a puff piece. Should we come back to it? Yeah. Okay. Is it true that this is going to be your last voyage? Wow. No comment. Who told you that? No, goddammit. Um, I'm only 52. I'm, I'm always start out with some stock dialogue. You know, favorite color, blue, favorite food, sardines. Kate's character is sort of viewed like National Geographic, you know. Uh, clearly, Bill is, there are, there are ideas of Jacques Cousteau, as you say, who I interviewed a number of times, as well as his son. You know, you are a huge admirer of Jacques. Yeah, I'm a huge, I'm a great fan. I, uh, you know, Cousteau was one of my heroes as a kid. I mean, I was right at the generation where his ABC show, his primetime show, we, we were obsessed with it. Yeah. Um, and there's something heroic about Cousteau, and he, you know, the combination of somebody who's an adventurer and an inventor, and you know, was a, a member of the French Resistance. I mean, yeah. everything about him is fascinating. And then also his style, his his whole world that he created for himself. He's a great filmmaker, I think. More about the Bill the Bill Mary character, Steve. Yeah. Um, well, you know, this character, I feel like um, a lot of it has to do with fathers and sons in this story. There's a, there's a relationship between him and Owen's character. Owen is his, is perhaps, his estranged son who he's never met. Um, Owen's 30, he's never met him. And, um, and, uh, and I, for me, I've always had this kind of, I, every movie I do has something to do with these, with these problems between fathers and sons and larger than life uh, father figures, kind of legendary characters. And in some ways, it's not what I grew up with. My father's n not like that at all. He's a very warm uh, person and very engaged with his uh, children. But um, but I've always been fascinated with those kind of characters, um, those kind of narcissistic, um, grand uh, people. Well, larger than life. Larger than life. Roll tape. Here's Team Zizou in underwater preparation uh, for action. Supposedly, Cousteau and his cronies invented the idea of putting walkie-talkies into the helmet. But we made ours with a special rabbit ear on the top so we could pipe in some music. When you make a movie, do you try to collect people that you're going to have fun with? Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like there's one kind of filmmaker that's like, Friedkin or someone like that who wants tension and conflict on the set and uses that. This is that. Billy Friedkin. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, and, you know, him and Gene Hackman, I think, was a perfect combination because both of them are people who, who feed off of a, off of a tension and, and, and use it. Right. And, it's, and, it, and it, you feel it in their work. And for me, I, I'm in the school where I like, um, I, I like to have people uh, back who I've worked with before and I like people to become friends, and I like that to be the energy that it makes, which is just, I mean, I don't think one is better than the other. That definitely, the, the tension's better for French connection. Some of the themes you talk about, you talk about the father-son dynamic, uh, patriarchy, what it means to be the leader of a group. That's a theme in this. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, I think that's a, a big part of almost all the movies that I do. Um, 
something about fathers and sons. I don't know exactly and, what it is. And your relationship is as good as it could be. Yeah, yeah, it is. But, you know, the other thing is I like, I like the idea of somebody who's got a gang, a crew. In this, you know, in this movie, he's got this whole crew, and that's his sort of surrogate family. Right. And leading them is, is, is you know, what gives him his kind of whole juice, I think. Yeah, I think life. that's a great idea. But do you feel a little bit like that on set, that this is your family? And yeah, completely. Yeah, and that's and, you know, and I think the movie's about an oceanographer, but it's just as much about a filmmaker. Now that this movie's over and you're promoting it, are is your head already in the next movie? Well, I haven't. I have you know I have a rough idea of what I want to do next. I you know I was been kind of thinking I might like to make a movie in India, and I've been thinking about this project a little bit, but. Um, but it, it is uh, you, releasing a movie is can be an overwhelming process, and uh, right now I'm yeah. in the thick of that. If I looked at all the movies you've made, you know, would I see some kind of common thread? Yeah, I think uh, there's something we... tonal in all these movies that's a little bit off, and um, and I feel, always feel like any character from any one of my movies could could walk into another one of the movies and be at home there, yeah. and there aren't a lot of other people's movies that I feel like any of them could walk into. And fit, you know. It's like a strange texture. Do you ever want to do something that is dramatically different from anything you've ever done? Yeah, I do. You I know. Mean, like an epic or a, the thing I want a to try to do. Comedy or I would. I I think I would. I, my idea is to try to make a movie where we don't make any jokes. Yeah. We resist <laughs> the impulse to try to crack a joke at every turn. Um, and um, and that's kind of that would be a big change for me. When you, who do you admire most among directors? Well, uh, who's influenced you the most, or who? Right, you know. my, maybe the biggest influences I think are, um, I, you know, one I love is Polanski. Polanski is a yeah. great favorite of mine, um, and John Huston. Who watches your movies? Yeah, it's a good question. I feel like, you know, we, I, I've kind of, at one point or another, tried to puzzle out: is there an age group or any kind of thing that distinguishes? I, I, I think it's like some personality type. <laughs> what kind of type would it be? Outsiders. Really? People <laughs> looking so. in with their face pressed against the glass looking I, inside? I think so. People who don't feel, people who either just don't feel, people who might feel like misfits. Anyway, that's the way I've always felt. And, mm -hmm. um, and, I, and, I, and you know, the people who I meet who are the real diehard fans um, of my movies, they're always kind of outsiders. Was it at some point inevitable that you would make movies that was, that was what you were going to do? I always thought of it that way, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I always kind of planned on it, and I don't know what was going to happen to me if it didn't happen. Uh, Did you see writing as a way in? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I wanted to make movies when I was a kid, and then there was a period of time when, I, somewhere in high school, I decided I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be J.D. Salinger or something. Right. And then I shifted, but I always, but I was always I interested in something visual anyway, and I sort of shifted back to that. And does Bill Murray like the movie? Yeah, yeah. Bill Bill was comparing it to Apocalypse Now the other day. He was? We, we, yeah, which for a, for, a, for a comedy is a strange comparison. <laughs> Worries me a little bit. That's great. Congratulations on the movie. Thanks so much. Thank it's you so for having me here. here. Thank you.